Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Carolyn and we are on our Simple Abundance journey this year, following along with Sarah Bon Bronick's book, Simple Abundance. And I told you if you were watching yesterday's video that I was not going to do a video for today, July 31st, because it's just sort of redundant with last month's caution closet activity. But I figured I would go ahead and dive into the August Joyful Simplicities so that I'm not a day or two behind because that seems like that is always what happens when I do the Joyful Simplicities on the first of the month. And there are so many awesome August entries that I don't know, I might even do a video every day because there's just so many good ones. So I don't want to miss out. And then plus you might not even be watching this until tomorrow, August 1st. Anyway, so we are starting a new month. We're over halfway through the year. And I've been reflecting on the journey so far and I did share with you guys, I think back in June, that I was just noticing a big difference for myself. I've certainly had my ups and downs this year and I think we all have, uh, but it's been really great to have the channel and you guys along and I love all your comments. So definitely continue with that. I really appreciate that. And just to keep in mind some of these things that we're talking about, right? And I'm wondering if any of you guys have taken the joyful simplicities and done something like I shared with you guys in a planner sort of thing, where you're writing down your, I guess, a little monthly bucket list, kind of like our summer bucket list. You still have all of August to, and I don't even think summer's not officially over till September, but I guess we kind of consider Labor Day, right? To be the end of, of summer, but you still have time to do summer bucket activities. So even small little things, like maybe you said you were gonna walk barefoot on the sand or something like that. It doesn't have to be some huge thing that takes the entire day to do. So I hope you're doing them. So as always, I have both of Sarah's versions of the book, her day book of comfort and joy, and then the new one that we've been going through this year. And I will cross reference because sometimes she leaves out some. And I think I'm going to have to cross-reference August. It does look like a lot of the August entries are rewritten and really lengthened. So I'll just make sure there aren't any August ones that are left out that I wanted to talk about. But I can't do more than one video a day. I know I did that one time, but <laughs> one is enough. So let's see what she says. Oh, remember I told you guys in one of the question videos that I did recently about what was your favorite children's book? And I said we were going to be doing something related to that. So that's that this first one is. And I think the libraries are open, at least for a curbside. I don't know if they've totally opened up entirely, but this one kind of involves going to the library. But you could probably find your creative way around it. So anyway, she says, rediscover the books that you loved as a child. Head off to a library and wander into the books section, the children's book section, with or without a little one. <laughs> Sit in the child-sized chairs. I don't think I would do that. <laughs> but anyway, I know what she's saying. And recall moments of contentment curled up with a good book. Was it Little Women, Black Beauty, Anna Green Gables, Judy Bloom, The Babysitter's Club? She's got a whole bunch of them listed here. <laughs> and I will tell you that the year that we went through the book with my Simple Abundance Ladies in 2018, and sorry if you can hear the, the noise in the background. I think the sprinklers just came on like they do in the evening. Um, but during that year, we actually went to the library and got them out. The librarian might have thought I was nuts because I had this whole list of my favorite ones. And But she helped me and she knew where they all were and there was only one that I couldn't find. But uh, it was fun. I took them out and then I took them one day up to you know a favorite spot and just spent the afternoon revisiting some of the stories. So maybe if it feels like a lot, you could maybe just try to get one or your favorite book. But it really was fun to 
revisit those because I think your memories are so vivid when you're little, right? So some of them really have an impression. Plus some of them were ones that I learned to read with. So it was like a big accomplishment to be able to read the book. So those were especially memorable. Oh, I mentioned this also recently too. It was Gloria Steinem that says, she tells us it's never too late to have a happy childhood. And Sarah says, I believe her. The childhood I would have chosen is captured in Maud Hart Lovelace's wonderful Best Betsy Tracy series. I haven't heard of that. If you want pure and simple escapism, run away to Deep Valley, Minnesota at the turn of the century to enjoy escapes with Betsy Ray and her friends. Hmm. I'll, I'll have to check that out. This is a new one that I don't think she had in the old book. And then speaking of books, see, we're going to have some entries about books so that you can see the theme. The next one is consider joining or starting a book club. And in this one, in the new book, she actually references, I guess, I have gone to her website, but I don't know if she's actually doing this, but she says to check out her website, which is simpleabundance.com or sarahvonbronick.com. And because it says to check it out for an up, any upcoming book club webinars that they might be doing. I still don't know if Sarah knows about my channel or not, but <laughs> um, anyway, so we already are kind of doing that. This is a little book club, I think. I think of it as. Um, the next one is about the artist's way. Have you guys heard of that? I went through that book, but now it's probably 18 years ago. And I did mention it earlier in the year too. It would be a good one to check out or revisit. And Sarah says, artists need to support, need support one way, wait, hold on. Artists need to support one another in their sacred endeavors. I cannot praise Julia Cameron's compassionate and compelling The Artist's Way highly enough. It's the first book I recommend to my workshop participants and the one I packed in my daughter's suitcase when she left for California to pursue a film career. Julia's 12-week course is in discovering and rediscovering our creative self is an intimate tutorial with a gifted and generous mentor. Her many books are equally inspiring and encouraging. And she's got the website here, juliacameronlive.com. And she has a, a blog and online classes. Check that out. It's an interesting program to go through. It's very thought provoking. And it's, you know how we've been talking about carving out the time during the day. She's very, very pro that. <laughs> uh, she tells us to visit in person or virtually Shakespeare and Company, one of the world's most iconic bookstores and browse tempting reading possibilities. So again, more about books. Okay, attics are great August destinations, she tells us. Although when I think of attics in August, wow, that's a tongue twister. I think of hot, hot, hot places. <laughs> she says, even if you, unlike the rest of womankind, have everything neatly packed away in labeled boxes, quote, the past is never where you think you left it, the novelist Catherine Ann Porter tells us. When we depart on sentimental journeys, we discover how right it is. So yeah, there's some reminiscing in August here in some of the entries, so I think that's why she's considering the attics really are places that we store memories sometimes, right? And then she goes on to say, where is your past? Is it in your attic or basement? Or at a mother or sister's house? Was it accidentally left behind at your former spouse's house? If remnants of your childhood or your private selves aren't physically located in places where they can be easily retrieved, you might want to have a gentle conversation about recovering them. This is especially important if you, like a woman in Carrie Fisher's novel, Delusions of Grandma, have become a quote, chronicler of absence, devoted to recalling what is missing from your life. Okay, I can see that. So drag box out under something shady and take along a pitcher of iced tea with mint. Give yourself a gift of a couple of idle hours revisiting your past and sorting through your memorabilia. 
I'm wondering if you guys have the things that you want to have. I think for me and my family there are definitely some things that were lost, but I do have so many photo albums. I've mentioned before that I have loose photos too that need to get organized in some way. Um, but it can be it can be nostalgic to look through them. And I think that's an interesting that's an interesting thought. Have you become a chronicler a chronicler of absence? So maybe your kids are grown and it's like all that you think about and you just look at their pictures. I mean, it sounds like she's wanting this to be a happy time, not a sad time. I'm sure we'll have a couple of entries about that so we can discuss that one more. Okay, the next one is the scent of love enveloped in a folded handkerchief, the feel of plush bears, flannel shirts on old bleach, on an old beach blanket, still with sand after all these years. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, again, there's this huge list of things. We may never have left the house, but as a Victorian novelist, Sarah Orne Jewett says, the road was new to me, as roads always are going back. I don't know what that one means. There's not a specific thing to do in that one. Again, it's about reminiscing, but there's not like a special activity. I'm not really sure where she, where she was going with that one. Okay, oh, I like this next one. I wish we could do, well, I guess I could do it now, but I thought about doing this before. Pretend you're a tourist and you've selected your hometown as the perfect spot to visit for an unpretentious, relaxing, and delightful exploration. Or is it possible for you to take a road trip to where it all began? When I went back to visit my first home, I was shocked to find out how tiny it was. I've had that experience before where I've been somewhere that I was as a kid and it's like, wow, everything's so big, you know, because your memory is totally different. Um, and the three block, or I should have said, everything's, everything's small. That's what I, mean, I meant to say when you think about it, because you were so little at the time that you remembered everything as big. And then now when you go back, yes, there's a kitty. Now when you go back as an adult, it seems small. Okay, so that's what I meant. <laughs> um, you can't imagine how wondrous it is to tell a little girl sitting, walking, and drawing slowly by herself that she had, in fact, move on. So that's about connecting with yourself, you know, and revisiting some places that mean something. So again, this is going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty sentimental month. She always has to make a statement. <laughs> and then she asks us, she always brings the food in, right, to these joyful simplicities. What does summer taste like for you? Lobster roll, blueberry pie, chocolate, egg cream, root beer float, potato salad. Make sure you revisit those taste sensations again. That's right, we talked about eating with the seasons back when we talked about food. So make sure you're savoring those things. So this is the old book, The Day Book of Comfort and Joy. And and there's only a couple that she left out, but this one is about finding a secondhand bookstore, again, with the books, you know. Um, and also, there's another one about, she says, there's a quote from Hildegard of Bingen, B-I-N-G-E-N, -E uh, who said, there is the music of heaven in all things. So... Sarah is encouraging us to create like a, a playlist with an assortment of sacred sounds that soothe. And I think she probably left this one out because she has a lot of older references to CDs and a lot of specific recordings that may not be around so many years later. And she mentions a catalog. You know she likes the catalogs. Again, it's probably something not in print anymore. Okay, here's another one. Reading specialty publications is a fascinating way to explore a new pursuit. And she mentions glance through American artist, dance, theater, 
crafts. I guess that's one, one um, publication. Opera News or American Craft for a glimmer of exciting parallel realities. I've never thought to look through uh, specialty publications like that. And oh, this is a fun one too, and this makes me remember back. So the last one in the old book is treat yourself to a deluxe box of Crayola crayons with all the colors or a wonderful set of colored pencils. And create a poster that reads, quote, if not now, then when? And I didn't bring mine. I have mine already pasted in my illustrated discovery journal. And she tells us to hang that where we'll see it every day. Now that's not in the new book, so she might have gotten rid of the entry. There was an entry called that, if not now, when? So if it's not in the new book, I will definitely give it a nod because that was a good entry. So it's exciting. It's a new month, endless possibilities, lots to talk about. I'm so glad you're along with me on the journey and Annabelle's here too, as always. I will see you soon. Um, I'm going to have a lot to say this month, I know already. So I look forward to sharing the August entries with you and I hope that your month will be an awesome one, okay? Big love to you all and I'll talk to you next time.